David, in 2007, you had a laparoscopic prostatectomy for chronic prostatitis. Before we get to that, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Dave Radford, LaBelle, Florida, 58 years old. Uh, me and my wife have an air conditioning company, and we have a couple of kids, and busy lives, lots of hobbies, all that kind of stuff. How long did you have prostatitis? Which symptoms did you have? Uh, I was riding bicycles and staying active, and I you know, started having trouble with my prostate, you know, urinary symptoms, things like this. Uh, then I started going for treatment, and we took some antibiotics, and it went away, then it kept coming back, and it went away, and kept coming back, and, and, uh, and, and finally it, it came here to stay, and uh, uh, it just ruined my life. Had it for eight years. The first couple years, you know, it was bad, but, but not so bad, but uh, the six years after that, it was miserable all the time, and I, I couldn't go, I couldn't plan my flights, I was sitting on the donut all the time. It was, it was an embarrassment, you know, constant urination, uh, all kinds of uh, embarrassing things. Not fun at all. Lots of burning. I felt like I had a uh, golf ball on fire. I was sitting on it all the time, okay? Had to sit on a donut all the time, and it, it, it interfered with everything in my life, okay? From sexual activity to going to the restaurant to driving. I couldn't book an airline flight, all these kinds of things I just couldn't do anymore. Uh, couldn't play drums, you name it, and it interfered with it. My life is over. Which treatments had you pursued? You know, obviously all kind of antibiotic concoctions, all kind of diet concoctions, all kinds of mineral and, you know, uh, one guy I think up in Tampa has got peanuts and all that. Everything just basically designed to drain you of money. Uh, uh, I, I tried anything and everything, uh, but not, nothing really worked good, okay? Uh, the symptoms came back pretty, uh, they were more severe every time they came back. What led you to laparoscopic prostatectomy? Basically, I, you know, I, I couldn't, my life is over, I couldn't do anything. I, I can't ride, I gotta lay in bed, I mean, obviously this thing's gonna have to be removed, okay? And the, all the urologists I talked to said it wasn't an option for me. Uh, I had an old Vietnam doctor I was going to go, go in to see who was my just general practitioner. And uh, he recommended that I have it taken out. And I, obviously I was worried about, you know, sexual function, uh, urinary problems afterwards, scar tissue, all this kind of stuff. But uh, I knew something had to be done or, or, you know, or my life was over. Well, like everybody else, I was procrastinating on having the organ removed, okay? And I was at Cleveland Clinic, and we had talked about just taking the semical vessels out, and maybe that was going to give me some relief, okay? Um, I had other surgeons just flat out so they wouldn't do it. Because I didn't have cancer, uh, they wouldn't have anything to do with me, okay? Uh, they were content just to let me suffer and die. But I didn't have cancer, so that was okay. Basically, I was out of options, so we started uh, looking around to try to find a surgeon to remove it. Uh, we looked at Nashville. Uh, they wouldn't even see me in Nashville. Uh, uh, other people in Miami, uh, not an option. Uh, Cleveland Clinic, it's never going to work, forget it. Uh, Shams, forget about it. Mayo Clinic, forget about it. It ain't happening. I mean, I hit a stone wall here where nothing was happening. I mean, I, I was really starting to get scared at this point. Uh, I mean, I'm in real pain. My life is over. What am I going to do? Just lay in bed and take antibiotics and pain pills? No, I, I got I to find something here. I was out of options. We'd been to see everybody. I got referred to Dr. Krongrad. We went to Miami, sat down with my wife. We talked it over. And at that point, uh, he was a little reluctant. But I convinced him he either had to fix me or shoot me, one of the two. And so uh, we talked it down. He gave me what the risks were. I knew there's, there's risk involved with this, okay? It's a surgery. How did surgery go? First thing I like to say is uh, when you're Dr. Krongrad's patient, you're royalty, okay? Uh, everybody from the hotel chain to the people at work there, uh, we were treated extremely good. We had a lot of our uh, post-operative work done there. It was extremely professional and quick. I thought I was going to be there all day in pre-op and it was like we were there for like an hour and a half and it was done. And it, I just couldn't believe how efficient the operation was. Also too, I'd, I've had surgeries before and they did uh, uh, one, 
it's always a problem when they're putting IVs in, they hurt, okay? Then the chemicals they put in hurt your arms. I guess they coated my veins, and that really was nice because I didn't have any pain after surgery with having my, my veins and stuff coated. Anyway, I came out of surgery. They brought me into recovery. Um, one of the things that really surprised me, it, I looked at the clock, it was 10 o'clock, and I could see it right away. And uh, it was very coherent. And uh, I was laying on my back for the first time in eight years uh, without pain without any kind of pain. I was really shocked for coming out of surgery and it, it, there just wasn't any pain. I, I was expecting to be in excruciating pain. It just wasn't. Uh, I was able to conduct business on my cell phone real soon after that, which really shocked me. People couldn't believe I just came out of surgery I was talking to. Uh, and uh, I was glad it was over with. And it was, it was, much, it was much easier than what I'd been led to believe. Uh, I was really expecting some bad medie medieval stuff. I've heard all the horror stories about surgery and what can happen, but uh, I think this is as good as it gets. After that, we just went through the regular re regime. Everybody else goes through the cath catheterization, all this kind of stuff. And uh, my catheter came out uh, in two weeks afterwards. And I, I, I didn't have any try to have to wear a diaper. Is one of the things I was worried about. Uh, I was able to uh, to go to the bathroom and hold it right away. And I didn't have any start and stopping problems. And uh, 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 that's another benefit of the surgery that that I'd always had trouble starting and stopping. And and I'd had. Uh, strictures and other problems, and, and I, I don't have that anymore. I, t I said, Doc, you took a golf ball out of my ass, okay? And it was gone. I could lay on my back for the first time in eight years, okay? I, um, they told me that I was going to have all this post-operative, uh, wanting to commit suicide and stuff, and I wasn't going to be right, but I was elated to have the pain gone, and I felt relieved. I never had any worries about committing suicide or or nothing really changed from that respect but right away after the surgery I had instant relief after that surgery okay it, basically within 24 hours uh, you know I never felt the need to take any Tylenol I just didn't have that that kind of pain after I was shocked that I didn't uh, the prostatitis was uh, the pain with there was totally gone uh, it was a big relief I, I was a big relief at that point then, then basically five days later, I'm able to go home and I'm able to get out and do a couple. I'm not standing on the hood. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm standing on the hood of my Corvette. I was shocked that I, could, I was able to do that. A month later, I'm back up behind the set of drums again. I like really playing hard. And I, I just couldn't believe I could recover that quick. Unbelievable. It's been two and a half years since your laparoscopic prostatectomy. How are you doing? Two and a half years later, uh, I'm cured. I went to somebody that really could fix a transmission. Uh, everything works 100%. Uh, my erections are fantastic. I don't have any pain anymore. Uh, I can enjoy sex again. Uh, I don't have to carry a donut with me places where I go. I'm not a laughing stock for people. Uh, uh, and basically we put together a lot of myths we, we put away about scar tissue and pain. I don't have any of that kind of stuff, okay? I don't want to commit suicide. Uh, but the fact is that I'm loving life. It was, I wish I'd done it sooner. Is there anything more you'd like to share with other men facing chronic prostatitis? I'd just like to kind of bottom line it for everybody. After going every place and going through all the, jumping through all the hoops, we had an eight-year problem that Dr. K had fixed in two and a half hours. And I'm just shocked that he, that it was such a simple procedure, so quickly fixed the problem. When it's all said and done, we're humans, okay? We're not meant to suffer. We want to camp. We want to fish. We want to fly planes. We want to play drums. I want to have a real life, not one with pain and suffering in it every day. That was the hardest part we had to try to get all these other people. They, they didn't feel our pain. I felt like Dr. K felt my pain, okay? I felt like that he really did want to help us. He did want to see me suffer, okay? That's why I'm here today, and uh, uh, that's what it's all about for me. I've got my life back. We're in an airport here. My airplane's out there. <laughs> if I've got a medical, I must be okay. I didn't have a medical before. Mm -hmm.